How's it going everyone, Escoblades here with some Assassin's Creed 3 multiplayer. This was uh, the very first game that I got straight after one of the three intro sessions. As I mentioned in the intro session video I uploaded, there are three intro sessions uh, this time around. And after the first one, you pretty much have the chance to, you know, get a game and it puts you straight into simple deathmatch, which, which makes sense. It's a nice progression. You might as well start off learning the basics of the game. For those of you who are new to the multiplayer, simple deathmatch is deathmatch but without any ability. So it's literally just you against everybody else. Um, I love this new UI. I love the, the whole Abstergo ent entertainment sort of slant to things. I love the, the presentation and this is a really cool sort of screen. You can do your taunts over here and stuff. Um, the customization, which I'll get onto in another video, is pretty cool as well. There's there's lots um, of you know different permutations, uh, different ways that you can customize the characters. But anyway, so yeah, I was explaining about Simple Deathmatch. For those of you who are new to the multiplayer, as you can see, there's no abilities, which would normally be in the bottom left-hand corner. You just have your target portrait in the top right-hand corner. And what you can see there is that the outline glows bright blue when you're in line of sight of your target. As you can see, I'm going to kill the Night Stalker there. And when the inner portrait glows bright blue, that means you're within proximity to them as well. So that will usually happen around the same time you'll hear um, heartbeat sound. And that's the um, audible cue that the Animus gives you to let you know that you're close to your target. Uh, in the same vein, if you hear the whispers which is covered in the intro sessions actually. If you hear the whispers, that means your pursuer is next to you. So you need to pay attention to that as well. And um, obviously you want to, it still works the same way as with other game modes. You want to try and get the best quality kills possible. Um, and uh, that starts with your approach meter, which you see underneath the target portrait. So it always starts at discrete. And then as you stay in line of sight of your target, it builds up. Builds up from discrete to silent, then to incognito. Incognito is the highest bonus that you can get, then silent, then discreet, then you go down to reckless, and if you completely drain the meter by performing high profile actions in line of sight of your target, then you'll drain it completely and start a chase, which you don't want to do, so you need to be aware of that. So that's pretty much how it is with simple deathmatch, you, you, again, you're just getting kills and you want to get the best possible kills. Um, one thing to note, again, for people who are new to the multiplayer, it's not about kill death ratio. So, you know, pay attention to that. It's about the quality of your kills. You can win a game with maybe three kills if you got three high quality kills, as opposed to someone who ran around and got 100 points uh, for every kill, um, you know, and, and got more kills than you. So it, it's about quality uh, and not necessarily quantity. There's some game modes where obviously quantity helps, but I mean, you want to be focusing on high quality kills. Now, this is a new thing. Well, it's a, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a new thing, but I like the presentation. Um, when you die, Rather than trying to guess what the person killed you, you know, who, you know, what points the person that killed you got, uh, when you die, you can press the back button and it immediately gives you a breakdown of all the points that were earned for that particular kill, which is really nice. You know, so you can see whether the person killed you um, with a streak bonus or whether the person actually just, you know, got a really high quality kill or whether they got a variety or extreme variety or something like that. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out because a lot of the time in Revelations, you'd be sat there thinking, how did he get a thousand points on me? Maybe it was a times two score bonus or something like that. And it was like, maybe it wasn't, but now you'll know. So um, that's definitely, you can see the challenges are back as well in the bottom right hand corner. As you perform the challenges, you get extra XP. So, you know, you, you can, under, you, you know, you, you know how far you're into that as well. And again, so let's talk about the maps. The maps, I really like the maps that I've seen so far. I mean, my favorite is Animus Core, and I think that's going to be a fan favorite for everybody. But my favorite at the moment is Animus Core. But like, all of the maps have three different variants. So you have your normal variant, I think, and then you have like different weather conditions as well. So um, you with the with this particular map, there's there's the variant where there's like you know the intense snowstorm. And it's really great because it really cuts down. I mean, like, I don't think they were exaggerating when they were saying, oh, it will change the style of play. It cuts down your visibility a lot. I mean, like, it's hard to really see in front of you. You have to have, like, really good target acquisition skills uh, if you're going to be playing on this map uh, where it is. As I'm just trying to get a hidden focus here. Like I said, you know, this was... I played this over the weekend. I was really lucky uh, to get the game early. I played it over the weekend, so a lot of the people were new, and they were mostly Spanish and French people. I'm not saying that in a bad way. They were the regions that broke street dates, so you know they were they were a lot of people. There were you know the vast majority of people from that region who were playing the game early were on here. Everyone was low levels for the most part. I did see a few people who power leveled up, 
And um, actually, shout out to Nick Nitrous, who I'm hoping uh, will be able to do a dual com at some point because we played some Manhunt together over the weekend. He got the game early as well, and uh, he was just going ham on people. I mean, like there was some 10Ks, some 12Ks. It was really good. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to... I will upload that game at some point. You'll be able to see it. And uh, see, I'm trying to get the focus on this guy again. For those of you wondering, what the hell is a focus? When you're about to kill somebody, you see that X prompt, uh, a little circle kind of fills around it. And if you let that fill all the way, that means you've got a focus bonus, which would be added to the points for your kill. Um, that's usually, you know, a good way to like build up uh, the points for your kill. And that guy had no idea that he was going to spawn next to me, um, that rather he was going to be my, my target. So it was, um, you know, this was this was a good game. Uh, for a long time, this was the top simple deathmatch score, obviously because not that many many people were playing and. You know the people that were playing and all that great, but you know I it was it was top in the world for a long time, so I was particularly happy about that. Uh, I will post a screenshot of the leaderboard right at the end of the video. So uh, yeah, so you know there's the, the different maps. Um, obviously, I'm recording this commentary sort of after I played this particular match, so I can tell you a little bit about uh, um, stuff. So you can see, besides your when you're in like a lobby or something. Or, you know, the, your name comes up and your profile comes up. You can see your number level. And besides that, that's where your, like, Abstergo score, Abstergo grade and all that stuff is going to be. So you'll be able to see at a glance sort of what, temp, uh, you know, Abstergo grade the person you're, or the people you're playing against are in. Uh, and if they have a number inside of that, I've been told that that represents where they are in the world in terms of, um, you know, the actual Abstergo grade. So... Uh, I'm sure as more people get on and as more people begin to understand it, you'll be able to, you know, aim for a higher grade and stuff. Uh, I do know that as you, it's based on the people you play in a lobby. So if, you know, if you're playing against people lower than you and you lose, uh, you'll lose Abstergo score. Um, if you're playing against higher people, uh, higher ranked people and you win, then you'll gain a Sturgo score. So that, you know, it, it works kind of like almost on a true skill system. Uh, and it will aim to match make you with people in or near your particular grade or ladder and stuff. So there'll be more information on that. And I'll probably do a video kind of explaining that as more people get on so that you can see like the dynamic movement of that and stuff. But anyway, uh, to mention a few things as well, uh, Chase Breakers, obviously, you can see it like, you know, dynamic as well. So obviously this being deathmatch, this is kind of a closed off part of the map. But like if you were able to run around and stuff, you have like the little ice falling as you run through the chase breaker, and um, it, it looks really cool. Uh, another thing to know, obviously, is uh, when um, you're playing team games, uh, they automatically reset for your teammates. So if somebody is, you know, d being a little bit inconsiderate and running through chase breakers, you don't have to worry about waiting for it to reset. They'll automatically reset as you come close. And they were open for your teammates as well, so it's really cool. Um, the lock system's obviously been changed a little bit, so I, it's still the lock system you know. Uh, but like you know, you, you'll probably see now when you're looking at a group, you have the option to use the right stick to browse through the group, as opposed to trying to just individually lock each other in like precise aim. So that that'll take some getting used to. Obviously, one of the big changes, as you've probably already heard, is the fact that X, uh, the assassinate and stun button are, you know, the same now. Whereas before it used to be press B to stun and X to assassinate, now it's both. Um, I definitely like it because I've noticed that a lot of people uh, who normally would just like walk towards someone that they have they think is their pursuer, and you know that B prompt coming up from a mile away, it's like now it's like do, do I kill them? Do I stun them? It's like it, it's one of those, and it's like if you're not sure, then you know it's uh, it, it definitely takes a lot of the guesswork out, and it's more about like being sure uh, so you don't you know blow your abilities and stuff abilities will come onto that I'll, I'll probably touch on those when i've um when i'm you know commentating a game that i actually used abilities in like i said this is just simple deathmatch at the moment so you know there's no use of abilities here but i have some gameplay on my hard drive where i used abilities uh there was a really good uh, artifact assault game actually where i just unlocked smoke and glimmer well uh, glimmer is really one of my favorite abilities right now um if you don't know what Glimmer does, it just makes you almost invisible. And it's really great for for just completely out of the way stuns. I mean, like you can get some really cool corner stuns amongst other things. Uh, I've been really having a lot of fun with that and stuff. So yeah, on the, for the most part, um, I've been enjoying it. Um, I noticed that like, and again, maybe this is just a perception thing and it, it, it might not be. But like you seem to run a little bit slower. 
um, obviously the free running's changed now. So you know, obviously, so like I've, as I've mentioned, X and B uh, have been merged now, so it's all on X. The free running, you don't have to hold A anymore. You can just hold the right trigger and run up to a climbable surface, and you'll just climb, right? It's just like the single player if you've played it. So there's no holding A to sort of sprint or whatever. It's just you know the safe free running. You can still press A to jump, you know, if you come to an edge, if you want to override that and stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can just you can just hold right trigger. To run around, um, so yeah, that's the you know that's 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 an interesting change. Uh, the, the, the free running seems um, again that's something that's going to take some getting used to. Uh, you, you, you're going to have to get used to like the speed of it and you know the the new style and stuff. Especially those of you who were like really adept free runners and didn't like Revelations one. Uh, it's going to take some getting used to. So it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. But yeah, this was just the first match. Like I said, it was the first match I'd played. And um, I, thought, I thought I did pretty good. I think it was a 9.2k or something. And like I said, I'll put right at the end of the video, I'll put the, <laughs> the screenshot I took of me briefly at the top of the world for Simple Deathmatch, which I was quite happy about. I also love the little accolade screen that comes at the end. Um, so like if you get one of the top accolades, it then shows you a little m movie clip of you kicking ass. Uh, this obviously wasn't me. This guy performed the most stunts. So it's him just punching people. But there's different accolades and stuff, and if you get one of the top ones, then it shows you a little movie screen, your little victory screen. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. There's going to be lots more multiplayer videos on my channel soon. Um, I, I'm guessing on the same day if I release them all on the same day. But, you know, I'll have a lot. I have a lot on my hard drive at the moment. So thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, take care. Stay safe as always. And bye for now.